Hi, this is Estelle Trengove, and this is my second lecture in my electric circuit series. In this lecture, I will discuss issues of power and polarity in the basic elements that we looked at in the previous lecture. The next con concept that we have to deal with is the concept of power, and power is the work done in a circuit per second. Work done per second. And it is measured in what, which we denote with a capital W. And that makes sense because voltage times uh, power is voltage times current, and it makes sense because it means that voltage is joules per unit charge. So joules per coulomb. And current is coulomb per unit time per second. So watts So therefore, watts are measured in joules per second. So it's the rate at which work is done in a circuit. And then we have a very, very important concept, and that is the concept of conservation of energy. So in a circuit, there's conservation of charge. Charge cannot be created or destroyed. And there's conservation of energy in a circuit. Conservation of energy always applies in a circuit. And that means that the power provided, the power supplied, the sum of the power supplied must be equal to the sum of the power absorbed. And this is a key, a very key concept and very important to remember, and we'll use it again. The sum of the power supplied must be equal to the sum of the power absorbed. Remember that on an earlier slide we said that power is equal to voltage times current and that it's measured in watts. One of the ways in which we can determine whether an element is absorbing or supplying power is by looking at the very important issue of polarity. So we know that when current flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, the element is absorbing power. So if it flows from a higher voltage to a lower voltage, it's absorbing. And if current flows from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, then the element is supplying power. So if it flows from a lower voltage to a higher voltage, it's supplying. So let's look at this voltage source here. The polarity is indicated as with a plus over there and the current is flowing in this direction so so from the polarity we can see that this element is supplying power in this example over here we've got the higher voltage up here and the lower voltage down here and the current is flowing from the higher voltage to the lower voltage so this element is absorbing power and in fact it's important to note that resistors always absorb power
a resistor can never supply power. In the next example, we've got the low, lower voltage here, uh, sorry, the higher voltage here and the lower voltage here, and the current is flowing from the lower voltage to the higher voltage. So this element is supplying power. And then on the last example, we've got the higher voltage here and the lower voltage here. And the current is flowing from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. So this element is absorbing power. And what that means in practice is that it is a battery which is charging. On this page, I've indicated some generic elements, so we don't know whether these elements are sources or resistors, but we do know that in for element 1, the higher voltage is here and the lower voltage is there, and the current is flowing from the higher voltage to the lower voltage, so we know that element 1 is absorbing power, And the power is the current times the voltage. In the second example, we see the higher voltage is here and the lower voltage is there. And the current is flowing from the lower voltage to the higher voltage. So we know that in this case, element 2 is supplying power. And that would be written as P equals minus IV. For element number three, the lower voltage is at the top and the higher voltage is at the bottom. So you must pay attention because the higher voltage isn't always at the top. And the current is flowing from the lower voltage to the higher voltage. So this element is also supplying power. So again, we have P equals minus IV. And for element 4, the, neg the lower voltage is at the top and the higher voltage is at the bottom again. And the current is flowing in this direction from the higher voltage to the lower voltage. So this element is absorbing power. Um, so we would write it as P equals IV. This notation, by the way, using the negative sign, you'll see in the text, but I think it can often lead to confusion if you depend on getting the sign right to determine whether an element is supplying or absorbing power. So I would recommend that you might rather look at the polarity of the voltage and the direction of the current and remember that if the current is flowing from the higher voltage to the lower voltage, the element is absorbing power and if the current is flowing from the lower voltage to the higher voltage, it's supplying power. Also, when you're working with calculating power, it's often easier to work with positive quantities. And so, if we had a current here of minus, minus 5 amps, then we can redraw that. So, this is exa the exact equivalent. If we turn the direction of the current around, we can now say that this is 5 amps, and these two are exactly equivalent to each other. Similarly, if we had a voltage of minus 9 volts here, then it would be exactly equivalent to turning around the signs, so we turn that around and then we can say that this is a source of 9 volts.